Double Dragon 3, reviewed on episode 11 of the Angry Video Game Nerd. There's a reason this one took me so long to do. Long story short, the game is hard as balls until you figure out some tricks and it's pretty fucking terrible. This was a fairly miserable experience at first, but let's just get right into it. What did AVGN have to say about Double Dragon 3, and was it really as bad as the reputation? Well, to start off, this is actually a decent little review from James from back in the day. He goes over some of the modes, enemies, levels, and so on. The major sticking point as to why he thinks the game sucks is that it's so damn difficult and that the extra characters you get through the game are completely useless. There's a famous line about the misspelling of Bimmy Lee as well, which you can see in the first cutscene if you select the two-player mode. It's a short and sweet four minute review, but he never really gets past the second level, so it's a little incomplete in my opinion. I feel like you never quite get the full experience unless you hang in until the end. Some games get better, and some get much, much worse. So what do I think of Double Dragon 3 in the NES? Well, on surface level, this looks just like any other Double Dragon game on the Nintendo. You run around, beat the shit out of hordes of bad guys, smash broken bottles in their face, and square off against bosses for 5 levels until the game is over. There is a little bit of platforming as there were in the other two games, and it's also 2 player. Sounds awesome, right? You can choose one of any three modes. Single player, two player without friendly fire, and two player with friendly fire. I still to this day hate that that's even an option. It feels like a relic from the days of the arcade games trying to steal your quarters. I'd rather a game be a little harder two player, with more enemies and harder hitting enemies, but to each their own. I tried to get a friend over to record some two player gameplay for this review, but they all ghosted me the moment I told them it was for Double Dragon 3. Double Dragon 3 starts with a little cutscene fight, and immediately you'll notice the difficulty shift from the previous two games. Enemies here interrupt your attacks regularly and beat the piss out of you rather quickly. It's pretty jarring just a few moments in. There are luckily plenty of other moves you can do right off the bat, found in this somewhat confusing table in the game's manual. No longer do you have to earn points to learn new abilities, but if you truly want to just play the game, you'll need to master the jumping spin kick. Otherwise you have to master the V formation, which is moving up and down just enough to get a priority attack off on your enemies. For speedrunning, it's the only way to play. As far as the casual gameplay goes, it's spin kick or die. The first level is brutal, and it's rare that you're ever going to get past it on your first try. Enemies come in waves of two, and there is a seemingly endless amount of them. Long gone is the era of a bobo, as they are completely missing in action from this game. The jumping spin kick can two-shot pretty much every single enemy in the game except for the bosses. There are surprisingly few platforming areas in Double Dragon 3. The first level has probably the worst one. If you happen to fall or get knocked off here, it's game over. Really? One life? That's some old school NES hard bullshit. There is one nice trick the developers included though. If you get to level 4 or 5 and die, during the game over screen, you can press up, down, left, right, B, A, start, and get one free continue. The level bosses are just as easy as any other enemy in the game. They just take a few extra hits to defeat. Two of the bosses actually end up joining your party after beating them, Chin and Yagyu. James seems to think that Chin is a worthless character, but he seems pretty solid and has a good amount of HP. If you watch speedruns of this game, Chin seems to be the best character by far. Yagyu has a slightly longer range with the sword attack, and he can jump super far, not like it really means anything. Each character, including Jimmy and Bimmy, have a special weapon that you can select from the start menu. Jimmy has nunchucks, Chin has iron claws, and Yagyu has long range ninja stars. Each item has limited uses, so it's almost better to wait to use them until the bosses. The game gets easier the more characters you have, because if one of them dies, another tags in. Think of it as having three health bars instead of one. As nice a feature as that is, it doesn't ultimately save Double Dragon 3 from being a mindless, boring slog of a game. The entirety of levels 1 through 4 are literally the exact same thing, with largely the same enemies, nearly no platforming to speak of, and basically all the same boss fights. The music is nothing noteworthy unlike the previous two Double Dragon games. You could argue that the title screen music is pretty good, but the rest is pretty generic and I honestly can't remember a single track. There is a story with plenty of detail if that's your thing, but when the game sucks this hard, it's hard to care all that much. 
Level 5 is where the game finally gets somewhat interesting. It starts in a 2D setting with a little platforming. Whatever you do, do not fall here. So use Yagyu to make sure that you can make these jumps. It doesn't look like much, but it's nerve wracking considering how long it took to get to this part. Once you get to the bottom of the level, you'd assume it's still a 2D environment, so you end up getting your ass kicked by everyone. What the fuck? After you get through this area, it's just one more asshole trap after another. The worst of which being this elevator thing where you have to jump off at the correct time. The first time through you think it just stops at the top, but no, you'll die if you stay on it. What bullshit to include that so late into the game with no natural continues. If you manage to get this far, it's just a grind to get to the last few bosses of the game. The first group of bosses being three mummies and I swear to god the first one takes like a million dropkicks to kill, but it's like the only way to actually defeat it. If you try to man up fist to fist, he takes priority and chokes your ass to death. So just be patient and dropkick him for a few minutes until he dies. The other two mummies seem to die in a somewhat normal amount of time, so that's a relief at least. The true end boss is some magical feral or some shit, and it's pretty painful. It's hard to land hits on her, and she attacks constantly with super awkward patterns. Once you learn all the attacks, it's not too bad to dodge. She still takes more hits than I'd like, for an enemy that is such a pain to get to. If there is any saving grace to this game, it's that there is a nice, long ending to see, I guess. So with all that being said, is Double Dragon 3 as shitty as AVGN says it is? Totally. It took out everything that was fun about the original two games. There is a complete lack of different level elements, a lack of enemy types to fight, weak and boring bosses, forgettable music, and a somewhat frustrating moveset to use. As I said before, it's kinda cool to use different characters and special weapons, but it's ultimately not enough to make this game fun, and that's really what the point of a video game should be. Maybe the two player is a better experience, but good luck trying to find a friend that wants to play through this one with you. I'll still toss this game a bone and give it a mediocre score of 2 out of 5 stars. It's not unplayable enough to warrant lower, but not replayable enough to earn higher.